great red insect. Get off the road. I'm sorry. Please go on. Know you? Are you something important? I don't think so. Anyway, you shouldn't feel compelled to know me. Why all the gear? Someone I know is getting an honorary degree. Who? The Prime Minister. And who are you? Can you spell your name backwards? A C C E B E R D R A W O H. Rebecca Hyde, very good. What have you done? How many words can you make out of thorough? Are you serious? Now, quick now. T-H-O-R-A-U-G-H. Thorough. Though, through, thunk. Two with one O, two with two O's. Poor, tug, hurt, rug, hug. Hour. Hour. Out. Got. Gut. Gout. What happened to Tough? I missed it. Never mind. If you want a job, call me there. What job? What's your name? N-A-I-T-S-A-B-E-S. Nate Sabis.
many words can you make out of thorough? Thorough. Hug. Rug. Ug. Two. Or. Did I say out? No, but I did. You go over to the window. Look out, please. Now then, describe this room to me. Give me all your impressions. Let me see. About six feet tall. Grey at Seventeen times fourteen. Two hundred and What's he like? Ugh. Out of 33. I suppose it's a pretty good average. Abby 9733? Is there someone there called Sebastian? Uh, Sebastian, someone. Mr. Sebastian. I met him at Oxford in the spring and he offered me a job. Hold on. A girl who says you offered her a job in the spring. In the spring? At Oxford. Ah! License number 660FYH. Let me smother you in jewels and furs. Let me whisk you to Monty in my Mercedes. What? Let me teach you the meaning of desire. Sounds a bit old-fashioned to me. Yeah, well, it is rather an old-fashioned business. What do you do? What do we do? This is Mr. Sebastian's personal assistant. We are a more or less sane and respectable department of the civil service, appearances notwithstanding. Would you like me to arrange an interview? Civil service? Good God. No, thank you very much. Well, you've lost her. Is she any good? No, no, can't tell. You've been doing rather a lot of this stuff recently. A lot of what stuff? It's gaily irresponsible stuff. This fart asking about. It's time you took a proper holiday. Oh, well, unkind to the poor girl. Hmm? I get tired, I get angry, I get bored. You need a rest. I do, I do. Abby 9733? What department of the civil service? Rebecca Howard, age 21, read mathematics at Oxford, left without taking a degree. Why was that? I got bored with it. Would I have to work in this place? Do you like music? But what is this job? Do you do crossword puzzles? I was born under Capricorn. I do crossword puzzles. I like music. I don't like snakes or custard. What is this job? Who is Mr. Sebastian? Uh, Mr. Sebastian is head of the department. Would I see much of him? Yes and no. You'll find him more whimsical than predatory, if that's any comfort to you. Well, I like them more predatory than whimsical. If that's any comfort to you. Yes. I'd say you were aggressive, temperamental, quick-witted. You seem to have the knack. I think you'll probably do. 
Do what? What on earth are we supposed to do? We've been here one bloody hour. No bloody chairs. <laughs> Some bloody job this is. I never thought he'd choose me. <laughs> I really didn't. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Miss Elliot. I'm Mr. Sebastian's personal assistant. I'm here to help you all I can. Any problems of any kind. No bloody chairs. Some bloody job this is. <laughs> never thought he'd choose me. I really didn't. <laughs> she needed... Good morning. I'm Miss Elliot. I'm Mr. Sebastian's personal assistant. I'm here to... Your first lesson in security. In restaurants, coffee bars, discotheques. In the arms of your boyfriends. Clam up. They're awfully sensitive. By the way, where have you been for the last three months? Training. For what? I'm going to be a civil servant. <laughs>
Right, my lovely children. Here we go. This is going to be tricky. Now, this is going to be tricky. Very, very tricky. I believe it's all about the gentleman who escaped from Wormwood Scrubs yesterday. It should tell us where he's hiding and how they intend to sneak him out of the country. I'm told they want him badly. And we want to keep him equally badly. Badly enough for one million attempts. Oh. Happy days are here again. Now, then. This seems to be a mixture of substitution and transposition. Watch these T's closely. Try and align them in columns. Do a biogram test. Watch out for dummy groups. I rather suspect that one. So, switch your gorgeous minds to overdrive. This is really quite important. And in closing, may I make a direct appeal to your patriotism? When we're finished! Miss Howard, Miss Beckwith, Miss Frost, Miss Duncan, Miss Thorpe, welcome. Some memory. Some show off. Hello, Elsa. What is it? Last night, two police spies came to my flat and asked me insulting questions. To what? What about it? What about? I'm a member of the Hampstead Action Group for Peace in Vietnam. Yes. Well, you would be, wouldn't you? Why does a sense of human responsibility make people so angry? Because of the horrid smugness that generally goes with it. Don't do that! What are you? Bloody machine or something? If you want me to resign, of course I will. Oh, God. God Almighty. Go away. Go away! <laughs> Go on. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll work it out for you. Come on. Go and do some work on your pal who got out of Wormwood Scrubs. I think you'll find that group five is a dummy. Five and ten dummies. Sebastian, get me General Phillips. Sebastian? General? I suppose you want to talk to me about Elsa Sharm. I am concerned about the state of security in your department, Sebastian. I'll tell you that directly. Much as your concern distresses me, General, I wish you'd leave my people alone. Do you mind? We'd better meet. In your office at, um, 4.30 on Friday. Sebastian, are you there? Will you be free? By all means, General, I simply sit here listening to music.
Dr. Bastian? Yes? I'm with the Home Secretary. Have you nearly licked it yet? Not yet. We'd love to see this fellow back under lock and key. I'm sure you would. But when do you think you will have it? Sometime next week, I should think. Ha, ha. Good joke. I hope so. Uh, special Squad. Concentrate on columns four and seven. Four and seven. My function as director of security is to eliminate trust, wherever it's an avoidable hazard. Make your point. All your girls know too much. Some of them know much too much. Your department is rancid with trust. In this department of mine, I require girls in considerable quantities who possess a highly specialized intellectual gift. They're hard to come by. When I find them, I need to keep them. Naturally, being intelligent girls, they realize that I trust them a trifle too much, and so they stay. And the intelligence service should thank God fasting that they do. Very well, to come to the particular. Elsa Shan should be dismissed. She's a bad security risk. Elsa Shan has worked here since 1942. Special Squad, invert column five. Invert yeah. column five. Let me give you a start. It's common knowledge that she was a communist and that she left the party at the beginning of the Hitler-Stalin Pact. Aside from that, she marches. Bless her burning Jewish heart. And signs things. And stands up to be counted at the drop of any honest radical hat. Do you think that's dangerous? I'm not an expert on honest radical hats I make do with a list of communist infiltrated organizations. She's joined quite a few of those in her day. Let's avoid wasting each other's time. I'm responsible for the conduct of my department to the Foreign Secretary Direct. I've seen three heads of security come and go, and I've never taken their orders once to sack my staff, ever. Elsa Shan is my best coder. She's been here for more than 20 years. I know that she's loyal. I haven't attempted to give you an order. I had hoped for your cooperation. 
In my judgment, the loyalty of Elsa Shan is, to say the least of it, divided. In these days, all sane loyalties are divided. Yours? Mine, certainly. Hmm. We must be having an intelligent conversation. A new woman once who used to say, let's have an intelligent conversation, as though intelligent conversation had some sort of toffee center. I couldn't do with it. She had to go. You think he ought to go? Yes, I do. He was running that department long before I became head of intelligence. At the moment, he's irreplaceable. That's a matter of fact, not sentiment. No, John, I don't think he'll be going yet a while. He's becoming jungly. He plays about with a little rubber ball. In no time at all, he'll be wearing spurs and giving away coding manuals to little girls in Hyde Park. Look, John, you and I know the way of the world. This country may be a third-class power, but we can still horse trade. We'll always have something to sell the Americans, so long as we have fellows like Sebastian in our stable. Keep an eye on him, though, and watch that Shan woman. She better be kept away from all sensitive areas. But, Sir that, For the moment, we leave it at that. Can I bum a cigarette off you? Hope so. I can't give up smoking, but once in a while I give up buying cigarettes and I have to beg them from strangers. The disgrace is good for me. You're a special squad, aren't you? Mm hmm That's right. What's Sebastian like? Well, he's a poor, lost lamb like the rest of us. Lost? He has a freak talent. The trouble is it's making a freak out of him. He's been in the trade too long. Can't stop. Well, they can't keep him here. I don't have to. Be careful, or you'll end up like one of us. I wonder if Sebastian's married. What did you call him? Sebastian. So impregnable. Thinking of storming him. Yeah. Come in. Sit down, Miss Hard. Troubles? Mr. Sebastian, uh, I imagine the other side have people who work for them like you. Code breakers, cryptographers. Yes. Well, the reason I ask is I've invented a code. I don't think it can be broken, even in a depth of three, even by you. Actually, I think it's really quite a cracker. Thought it might be useful for our people to use, our spies and so forth. It's hard. What are 12 and 12 today? 24. You made it 25 last week. Not all burned as confidential waste. I wanted to know why we couldn't break the Albanian code. Oh, Lord. We were at it for nine hours. I suggest you use the standard brand of arithmetic in future instead of your own personal variety. I'm terribly sorry. And right, then. A word here ending in I-A-N. T-I-A-N. In fact, B-A-S-T-I-A-N, Bastion. Something wrong, though, the S-E doesn't fit. Doesn't take shortcuts. Could I have it back, please? Looks more like T-H-E. The Bastion? Never reject any possibility. What do you feel? Sick. How about this group? Could be O-U-S. Ridiculous? No, it doesn't fit. Pompous. Yeah, that's right. That sounds right. P-O-M-P-O-U-S. That's right. Now, what have we? The bastion is... What is it? Uh, we're ending in O-T with an I goes here and an I goes there. The bastion is a pompous idiot. We've cracked it. Imaginative, simple use. I was curious it might be, but you'll learn. Where are you going to, Miss Hyde? I've learned. And there it was, Pop Pickers. What did you think about that one, eh? Well, let's go over to the panel and find out. Uh, Carol, I think we'll start with you first. 
I know what's going to happen to the song, but you tell us what you think. Do you think it'll go or not? I, I, I know people like listening nowadays to things that we would have considered just a lot of noise. At least, we used to have some melody. Not that they haven't got something. I enjoy the total sound, if you know what I mean. Oh, they've definitely got something. It's got something, but uh, she doesn't know what it is. We'll play you another record. Tell us what you think about this one. Silly. I quite often fear for the balance of your mind. So we miss you. I shouldn't worry, darling. We're both of us madly in love, and that's all that matters. Me with Ned Sarvis, and you with you. Hail Persephone, goddess of spring. Mm -hmm. Ha, bloody ha. It's afternoon. You're a liar. Anguish, despair, remorse. Wary of salt. Kitchen. I was so stoned last night. I can't remember what happened or anything. Oh, I wish I wasn't so horrible. I wish I was nice. Oh, that's better. 
Stay with me a bit longer today, will you? And talk to me. What about? Who you are. What you do. All that bit. I don't know anything about you. Except Saturdays. But I have got something to do today. That's why I came. To tell you. All right, then, go! Hey. No, um... Just, just a minute. Uh, g give me half an hour. Miss Howard. Mr. Sebastian, what a nice surprise. And on a Saturday, too. Are you going to the country? No, I was going to see a lovely horror movie. Oh, I see you in a punt. With some nice young man in a punt, trailing your hand in the, what's his name, the water. I don't know people who go about in punts. You should. Because girls who go to the cinema in the afternoon get fat and pasty-faced. And sinister gentlemen with spectacles sit beside them and rub knees. If I were you, I'd go and find a punt as soon as possible, before it's too late. Let's try it yet. Months ago, you spoke to me on the telephone. You said, let me smother you in jewels and fur. Let me whisk you to Monte, my Mercedes. Let me teach you the meaning of desire. So? Hello. You'll have to leave the department. All right. It's not all right. All right. You know, you could stop yourself doing that if you wanted. I could what? You could train yourself to write those little things down later. And even if you forgot some of them, it wouldn't be the end of the world, would it? Who put you on to me? Nobody. I just decided you were rather fascinating. So I thought I'd give you a whirl. Did you? What do you want? Well, I'd rather like a cup of tea. a bit of use being scared of men, because half of them are scared of you. And the other half are super. The rest need a jolly good wallop before it's too late. Sugar. No, thank you. So I'm not scared of men. I'm so glad. I'd better think what you do if you got panicky. Are you scared of women? No. Shall I give you some advice? No. Oh. What are you doing this evening? I should go to a nice, quiet gaming club and play a nice, quiet game of Baccarat. I don't think you will.
keeps a woman in Islington, and he may want to go on. But there now, it's my lucky night. Oh, good luck. Thank you. Thanks. Your blood is spoiled, you know. But in a nice way. You're not going to like my room. I bet it's foul. This is where we have to pick our words very carefully. I could ever so easily love you. Like anything. Like absolutely anything. But I shouldn't rupture yourself. Did you pick those pretty words carefully? Not very. They tend to lack the old careless charm. Nothing you do lacks the old careless charm. You are coated in the old careless charm. Like bloody icy sugar. I'm going to paint your bloody wallpaper. I've been raped for years. Well, that's a crying shame. I have to do something about you, won't I? Great, sir. Are you going to set me? <laughs> well, I should. I shall behave with sickening discretion. Yes, I can well believe it. No, I won't have you doing that now. Stop it. Dirty. Put it down. You 
really are in a bad way, aren't you? This honor it isn't Saturday. Uh, Carol, I won't be seeing you next Saturday. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> saying what? You haven't said anything. I shan't be seeing you again. I'm just calling up to say goodbye. Here comes the night. Carol, you there? Oh, very, very interesting. Thank you for calling. I can't think of any suitable answer to that, so I think you'd better just hang up. Here comes the night to make me remember. Word has reached me that you've altered your style of life. Really? Really. I understand that you're um, escorting one of your own coders. I won't ask you how you found this out. It's not known in the department. Ah, oh, good. Do sit down. Generally speaking, I consider my private life to be my own concern. Well, yes, of course it is. But then again, of course it isn't. However, we'll let that go by. I really wanted to talk to you about Elsa Shan. I gather that you deny the fact that she's an unacceptable security risk for reasons of sentiment, which no doubt do you credit. Leaving my sentiment aside, I dispute the fact as fact. John Phillips wants her out. He's prepared to make an issue of it. How far are you ready to go? Try me and see. That's a crass response. Five years ago, no, two years ago, you might have meant it, but you wouldn't have said it. Remember, Sebastian, no man is a safe king of his castle. Dirty rascals surround us all. Uh, who am I escorting at the moment? Can you help me with that? Escorting? Yes. It's an old-fashioned term used by the head of intelligence to match his old-fashioned grace. With whom am I sleeping? Miss Howard, I believe. And do you believe what you're told by General Phillips? Or does General Phillips believe what he's told by you? As security officer here, I'm part of General Phillips' establishment, and he is my direct superior. Your question, therefore, strikes me as immaterial. You're a hatchet man, Jameson. You have just the look. I'll let you into a little secret. Sometimes when I'm sitting, vacantly picking over my mind for signs of dry rot, I hear the mermaids call to me. They're ladies of doubtful loyalty, whose past no one can ever screen. And they say... It doesn't matter what they say. It wouldn't amuse the general. You know, Jameson, I believe you're just about ready to take over this department. And I'm about ready to let you. It's a pity you don't know a damn thing about coding. Uh, my loves, message for you from Orange Grove. What's happening in Orange Grove? If you know your South America, you'll know that they suffered or enjoyed, according to your taste, a recent communist upheaval. A left-wing revolution. Let's not split a very fine hair. Anyway, that's the message. Fairly simple-minded effort. I think it's almost direct substitution. You want any help? Come and ask me.
Nice and easy? I managed it by myself. Oh, you're a very clever girl. It's a message from the right-wing military command listing its requirements in the way of arms to suppress the peasants, I suppose. Now, who could they be sending that to, do you think? The Americans have half their second fleet standing off their coast. Now, what am I supposed to do about it? Swim out there and sink it? Are you sleeping with that Howard girl? Do you hold me answerable to you for my politics, my private life, or both? It doesn't do you any harm to hear a question once in a while. I don't expect any answers. Elsa. Peace be with us. Peace is with precious few people in this world. Why should it be with us? Can you direct an innocent Irish girl to Soho? I've got a big surprise for you. Oh. I just sort of went berserk. I sort of pounced on it in the lunch hour. Came away a treat. I really hated it. I suppose I was fond of it. You didn't even notice it. You can be fond of things you don't notice. Like me? I was talking about the wallpaper. Turn that off. I'm asking you to turn that off and talk to me. Did you enjoy it? It isn't music to you, it's just a tranquilizer. Free your brain for mathematical gymnastics. You've spoiled it for yourself. And for me. And for everyone else around you. It's your dreary coding medicine. Well, quarrel with me. <laughs> You're right, of course. Which I hold against you. Most music just reminds me of the codes I've made out of it. I fill my life with patterns of mistrust. I make them and I break them. I allow them to infest my mind. And all I get out of them are secrets I don't want to know. I'm kind of a septic tank for all the world's ugly secrets. All the news that's unfit to print. Why didn't you give it up? Well, the trouble with a habit is that it becomes habit forming. Hmm. Why don't I stop trying? <laughs> Why don't you? Because I'm just a kind of project for you, aren't I? A ruin deal for restoration. You just go online there feeling bitter and I'll get on with it. How's that for a fair division of labor? Yes, I suppose you can't restore me. Supposing I just crumble away. All I want to do is paint the walls and make some new curtains and get rid of that horrible torture chamber light. Then if you just choose some paintings, hey. You really did love this wallpaper, didn't you? Hmm? You've had it invisibly mended. Which 
you mean? There's a patch here. Well, come on, come down. It's a bug. A listening device. Good morning. Chief is with the Foreign Secretary. Yes, sir, I've already been told. Can I do anything for you? You bug my room. Did somebody bug your room? And did you come pushing your way in here to ask if it was me? How very extraordinary. <laughs> You're an amateur, Sebastian. A bad amateur. You won't be warned, you can't be taught, you don't even know when you've fallen flat on your face. I suppose you were too overheated to read this morning's paper. And who do you think told the left-wing MP? Does she admit it? Yes. Was she smug about it? No. I think she was a little bit alarmed. We usually manage to alarm them a little bit. The chief is with the foreign secretary, trying to persuade him that it was an accident, that no one could have foreseen, and that it won't ever happen again. Now, I see her. She's back at the coding office. Jameson is dealing with the technicalities involved in her immediate dismissal. Well, you can tell the chief. I have my resignation in 24 hours. Oh, I'd think about that. Would you, indeed? Did you bug my room? It's an amateur question. So you finally did it? Yep. Enjoy it? No. Did it make you feel virtuous? No. It wasn't very interesting. It made me feel, um, unstable, which I suppose I am. Loyalty, that's what's been my trouble. I saw us both, you and I, as a pair of grizzled veterans, cynical, wary, holding the fort to the end. <laughs> it's amazing how one can float through life on tides of sickening slop like that. I don't think they'll send me to prison. Of course, I'll lose my pension. I never heard of a martyr with a pension. Oh. oh. I'm sorry I've messed things up for you. Give us a bit of a cuddle. Oh, Elsa, Elsa. God almighty. <laughs> It'll work out. Come on. Come on. I made a shambles of this because, well, because I'm not sensible. When I think of the things we're doing in Asia, for instance, I never managed to make an intelligent assessment of the situation. I think of mothers with dead children and children dying alone. My mind gets stuck with things like that. Trouble is, when the people who matter make their intelligent assessment, one of the byproducts is always dead children. Trusting you has cost me my job. Never suited you, anyway. <laughs> Come on. It's no good expecting you to take care of yourself, but keep the pink flag flying free. You ought to get married or something.
I suspect group, group nine. nine. No, no group, group eight. eight. Check, Check on, on group eight, eight and group, group three. Die! Die! They're all saying you're going to leave, is it true? <laughs> Yes, it's true. Just about completes your project, isn't it? Now get out of here. Get out of here and keep away from me. There's no need for you to do this, you know. You mean I can stay and allow Phillips to allow Jameson to run my department? Well, what are you planning to do now? I'm going back to Oxford. My old college will give me a job. Putting yourself out to pasture? I wouldn't call it that. Oh, well, I expect we shall meet again. I doubt it. Oh, I expect we shall. Sebastian, what a happy coincidence. I haven't seen you for more than a year. I was just thinking about you. What are you doing? I'm searching for a pasque flower. Really? Yes, really. And what will you do when you find it? I should look at it. My goodness me, you are leading the simple life. I have a job for you, Sebastian. I suggest that you dispose of it elsewhere. This is the biggest thing we've handled since the war. We're going into it with the Americans, full cooperation. They're giving us a very good deal. But they want you. Come back on your own terms. Not interested in bargaining on any terms. I'm perfectly happy as I am. It's going to be the championship game. I wish I thought I could do without you. Not at all interested. No, not at all. You just passed by a pasque flower. How did you know? I was a botanist once in my reckless youth.
If we don't beat this one, we might be in bad trouble. You've always been a bloody nuisance, Sebastian. God knows I wouldn't ask you back for fun. All right. Three months only. Done. On one condition. Elsa Shan gets her full pension as a senior supervisor backdated till October. Certainly. I'll settle for a silver salver. With your head on it. My head, alas, is already bespoken. To stern a man than you. Welcome back. Thank you. I shan't actually be staying long. What can I do for you? I want you to take care of yourself. The opposition has become very sensitive to our decoding capacity for reasons you'll discover. They won't be at all glad to hear that you're back. You think a Chinaman's going to break my neck in Bond Street by the side of his horny hand? No. No, they use more sophisticated techniques than they play away from home. But they may well try to damp your enthusiasm. You used to complain this was a dirty business. Now's the time to bear that in mind. Yes, darling. Not no, darling. Yes, darling. Please don't leave me alone. Just as soon as I see yes in your face, darling, you don't have to say it. Just let me see it. Why? Why? Because of all the money we're going to make, all those lovely pound notes. I don't want to. Yes, darling. Sing us a song. Come on, darling, might get you right back in the charts. Come on, sing something. Might be the big comeback of Carol Fancy. How's your lovely voice these days, sweetheart? In Boston. <laughs> That's it. I knew you'd say yes. Here comes the night. Here comes the night. That's a recording of the first Russian satellite ever launched. Morse. Yeah, good old Morse. Every country knows it, every country uses it. No substitute has ever been invented. Even sounds kind of oldie worldy, doesn't it? Okay. Now, this is a second Russian satellite. More good old Morse. You know, we got recordings of everything the Russians ever put up in space. You ever hear a dog bark from 200 miles? Yeah, all right, all right. Okay. Now, this is the latest one. This is the one they just put up there, the one that's flying around there right now. What's that? Quick as a whip. That's my boy. You heard something else in there, didn't you? Yeah. Now, that's a little bit we're worried about. Listen. It isn't atmospherics. No. It isn't space dirt. No. It's cold. It's cold. And a boy. Okay, kill it. Now, in a few moments, it'll be flying right over our heads, and you can hear it talking to us in person. Then afterwards, we'll compare it with the tape you just heard, and we'll have a depth of two. 
Now, that Sputnik is flying over every country in the world. It's looking down our necks and everybody else's necks, and it's sending the story home to its mama in code. Now, what can it see that they're so anxious for us not to know? Come on, please. Here it comes. Any opinions on that? Wait, Morse. ordinary Morse. Ordinary Morse, nothing more? There's something in there as well as Morse, some funny blips. Thank you, Miss Frost, some funny blips. Now, we've managed to isolate those funny blips. I want you to listen to this. These are the blips without the Morse. Slowed down 100 times. And the same blip slowed down 1,000 times. Now, would you want to hear it played 10,000 times slower? listening to is a communications code, like Morse, but not Morse. So it'll be 12 hour shifts over a seven day week till it's broken. Oh. Natives are restless tonight. Now listen to me, listen. Feel for the pattern of it. Feel for the pattern. The genius who invented this probably thought it would drive you mad. Don't let it. I see before me a lot of new faces. Well, those of you who don't know me, will be told by those who do that I'm a reasonable man. <laughs> and when we're finished... Everybody goes home! And when do we finish? Never! Break your hearts with this one. Quite like old times. <laughs> Becky Howard left over six months ago. How's it going? It isn't. I know, I know. You've only just begun. But I've had an American here who regards this affair as a threat to the survival of the Western world. I told him to be patient. Then he said there was a threat to the whole of civilization as we know it. So plod quietly on. <sighs> plod quietly on.
Mr. Sebastian? I'm going for a walk, Miss Elliot. Why not? This one's going to be here when you get back. <laughs> Rebecca Hyde, yeah? Re Rebecca who? I'm sorry. A mistake. I danced before the Sultan. You see, I am a passion flower. I unfold before him. Why is he not in play with the Tsar? Come on, give a guess. B.O. B.O.? But then I used this new stuff and I've got him climbing all over me. Why don't you come up home? Just for old time's sake. It'll do us good. Could you? Come on. Me like hell. You haven't had a decent giggle for a year or more, and you're so glad you bumped into me. That's what you're going to say, isn't it? That's what you're going to say. <laughs> what I'm going to say is that I've got to go, Carol. I've got a lot of work to do. Hello? Are you ready? Oh, Toby. I'm getting impatient. Oh, it's party now. It's four o'clock in the afternoon, for heaven's sake. Bring him down now. All right, but um, not just at the moment. I have a friend of mine with me, as a matter of fact. We're just having a drink. Pour me one of those, a double. Yes. <laughs> oh, o all right, I I'll ask him, but uh, I don't think he'll want to come. A double. Would you like to go to a party in the flat below? He's just leaving, as a matter of fact. But thanks you for the invitation. Bye. I thought you might find Toby interesting. You know, he's in advertising and terribly grand, and he does all the really swish commercials, supercars, lots of dollies. Goodbye. Goodbye, darling. Oh, no, just a minute. One for the road. Here's to us. To you. Hello and goodbye.
So, this is the one who wouldn't come. Come in, everyone. I don't think we're madly welcome, but come in anyway. Anyway, anyway, anyway. You're so translucent. People won't come to my parties. I have to bring the parties to them. <laughs> Carol, come and look at his eyes. Are you on something, old boy? Good Lord, this chap turned <laughs> on, you know. <laughs> turned on. Turned on. <laughs> Come on, man, let's see you fly. You can do it. Just spread your wings and you'll take off. You can fly, can't you? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Fly. I told you you'd need to take care of yourself. Sebastian, I heard you were back. I, I just... Uh, I only, uh, only just this minute. Are you quite recovered? Yes, thank you. Well, we all need taking out of ourselves from time to time. Don't let it spoil your concentration. Yeah. Plod quietly on. Did you have a good walk? Good. You went for a walk. Oh, yes. Yes, it was quite lovely. You didn't come back? No. I was... fart assing about. I meant to give you this address. If it's of no interest to you, just discard it in the confidential waste.
I chosen a bad time. I wasn't expecting you. You better come in. Would you like... Uh, what would you like? A cup of tea? Chopin? Some ravioli? You look exactly the same. You look different. I think I'd better go. You've only just got here. Sit down. Let's have a good look. God descended in a shower of microfilm. What? Are you still in the alphabet trap? <clears throat> yes, <clears throat> but only, um, only temporarily. Yes, you've got that look. Same old zombified look. You look exactly the same. No, I, I, I've, uh, I've changed quite a deal in the time. I've, um, I've sort of lost the habit of. Uh, being comfortably alone. I've been sleeping too well either, so that's given me plenty of time to... to think and uh, consider and decide that against my will and my worst nature, I love you. Oh, yes, I like that. That was a super icing sugar performance. And I'm ever so pleased you love me. Where the bloody hell have you been? But where the bloody hell have you been? Don't I've I... been here. Well, I found you here. Why are you getting so cantankerous about it? I haven't done anything to you. Go on, make a beast of yourself. Now you've woken the baby. Sausage. No, what I meant actually was. I know what you meant. Yes. You are. Did you manage on your own? I didn't have him under a hedge. I was going to be adopted, but he wasn't. Because he's scrumptious and I love him. Why didn't you too much. tell me? Why didn't you tell me? None of your business. Well, of course it's my business. Good God, you might have given it away or something. Him away. You're very good. I love you. What's his name? Jason. Oh, good God, that's a dog's name. It's a hero's name. Anyway, he has a dog's life. <laughs> oh! Bet he hasn't. Isn't he a little wet? Yes. Well, it does happen. Yes. Oh, 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 come on. Come on.
Don't start that. Sebastian, I'm at that address you gave me. Will you send over five of your best girls from Special Squad and tell them to ring a bucket of counties? Right. This is your kitchen. Kitchen. Get out of here. I don't want to see you again. I want 13 rows, seven to a row. And when you've finished with those, use the sugar lumps. Here, I'll take the tape and take them. I dote on you. I absolutely adore you. Thirteen rows, seven to the row. You are a monster. I've been on the wrong track. Now, all you need are five good girls, and you can help. And we can lick this in about seven to eight hours. All I've got to do is to reduce that Sputnik mumbo-jumbo to a viable equation. You're some awful kind of maniac. It's marvelous. Quite marvelous. It's marvelous. One, two, three, four, five, six. You want to marry me? Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. You'll make your son a bastard. Like his father. I think I've got it. Look at those wretched girls with their bucket of counters. I said 13 rows, seven to the row. You're gonna make me so miserable.